trip down. Last trip. So it's kind of a, I don't know, do you call it a sad day or a... This is a sad day in the anthracite. <laughs> End of an era, if you will. Yeah, for, for this mine. We're standing at the gangway level of the Alfred Brown Coal Company 7 foot slope. And um, we've been working this place for 13 years now. Us, it's been here for about 15 or 16, I think. Um, but anyway, that's the foot of the slope right there. And this is going to be the last day down here. We're, we pulled most of the equipment out today and uh, moving on to the project in Hexerville. We're gonna put a slope down over there, which hopefully is gonna work out. So we're gonna continue mining, but but our old friend, our old friend, the seven foot slope. Yeah. This is it for it. Something. Really something. Push a lot of buggy into that dump right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last of it. That's the flat car sitting there. The uh, gangway, the actual coal car went out about an hour ago. We took the, tipped it up on the side, took the axles off, put the coal car on the flat car, pushed it out to here, and push that into the gunboat and sent that outside. Can you see that, Josh? <laughs> so this is, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just funny. We've been at this mine a long time, and this is where we really started and really started learning about actually mining anthracite coal instead of, you know, instead of just the, the history end of things, it's the actual, you know, currently mining coal. We developed most and, of this mine, actually. When we came here, the only thing that was in was the the seven foot, the rock, well, let's take a look. Um, mm -hmm. The seven foot, the rock tunnel here. So we're in the seven foot vein. You can see the vein of coal pitched like this and the chutes go up and the slope uh, comes down through the seven foot. Then we make a turn into the rock tunnel here to the skid more. This was all in when, when we showed up here. It really came to this mine because it was the closest one. You know, we're from up, up the northern field, up by Scranton Way, and um, this was the closest one. So we said, well, well, go to that one and see, see if it'll let us try our hand at, you know, swinging a pick. And um, John could have been a nicer guy. Yeah. It, uh, yes, whatever you guys want to do, come on down. So we started at it. But yeah, we, there's a switch track here that we pulled out a little bit ago. And the rock tunnel comes into the skid more vein here. There's a diamond here that we also took on a little while ago. The rail's going to stay because it's mostly shot anyway. But when we came, this rock tunnel wasn't even here. And um, diamond obviously wouldn't have been here then, and the rock tunnel wasn't quite as wide there. The track just went through this switch and work the Skidmore vein right here, east and west. And when I started down here, I was working over here on the west side up in Skidmore. I think we had 10 or so shoots in. So these weren't even here yet. These are rock holes up into the bottom split of the Mammoth vein. So this was number one through uh, 10 or 12 or so shoots. But as you can see, if you take a look up the shoot, she's done. It's getting more gone. <laughs> So this went out to the west here a little bit longer, and then um, so the vein didn't pinch out. What happened? It got pretty bad top out there, and we just mm -hmm. quit going. Quit going west. Since, and since we're since we're back here, I just saw something for, for the video's sake. It, it is like really bittersweet, I guess is the word I was looking for before. To start out, this is actually the second mine I worked at, but to start out here as a laborer just pushing buggy all day and then work up to being a miner and, and actually drilling and firing coal and all that. And, uh, <laughs> and to leave here as a mine foreman. <laughs> so, pretty cool. 
go back to the development of this place, these, so all these rock holes, we'll get to them, I guess. So these weren't even here. So if we go back to number one shoot back this way. So this is the number one skidboard chute. Up above this, 50, 60 feet up, there's another, it's called the, it's called the airway or the, man, the monkey, um, it's the main return for the air. So it's another tunnel like this, a gangway like this, up above, paralleling up the chute. And directly over this is a rock tunnel, similar to this one that we passed. Uh, that was one of our first jobs. Um, we worked in the Skidmore here a little bit, but then uh, when we, me, Banks, and Mike A showed up, and John said, well, we got the extra help. I've always wanted to go after that bottom split. Let's do it. So he gave us the chance to drive a rock tunnel, so that was pretty neat, using the jack leg drill, uh, which we talked about at the, on the tours that we do. Um, so we just started driving, a, I mean, similar to how this is up at an angle, we just drove it straight, and it's not very, it wasn't very big, at least you know, probably six feet tall by four, five feet wide. And uh, <clears throat> that went in and we, we drove that thing old school using two safety lights to keep that thing straight. And <laughs> we're back in there driving that a ways and it's supposed to be straight, it wasn't quite straight. So that's why that got named the banana tunnel. Kind of, <laughs> kind of hooks around it a little bit. <laughs> but that went, so we hit the um, bottom split of the mammoth, and then we kind of stopped that rock tunnel there, and then came down here. So that would that would have been the airway out for the fan, and and also the escapeway. So the the fan would suck the air, you know, from the slope down, you know, up through the the chutes across, and then out the um, the rock tunnel. But we drove these rock holes also instead of going into the into the bottom split because the bottom split is how thick is it here 15 12 15 yeah feet the there? other side was, over there was a little thicker it was it was about uh i think it was like 23 feet thick over there here it, it thinned out on this side a little bit more though. so since we already had the gangway and the track established here instead of driving a rock tunnel straight in and then driving a new you know going in and then driving a new gangway either side like we are here that would be a lot more development we wanted to get at the coal faster so we used the uh, existing infrastructure with the track and just drove these rock chutes up into the into the vein. So if you poke your light and your camera up there, you can see where the vein used to be. So that's all top rock and just nastiness that came down after the coal was exhausted. And this, you'd go up to the top of this chute and the vein pitched back this way at the same angle this is. And you'd go up there and you'd drive a chute up to the airway and then connect with the monkey up there across and then from there up you just wing long holes up and fire that all down and load it out the chute here. Yeah there was times here when it was that thick you wing a few long holes off you'd be, you could be tapping out of one of these chutes for a month. <laughs> just tapping coal, tapping coal and by tapping I mean loading coal out of the chute into the minecart. This is obviously, you know, dismantled now. The shoot boards aren't in or anything, but but this is where it would run down and into the car and then get hand pushed back out to the switch and out the rock tunnel back to the seven foot vein and dumped into the slope car or the gunboat and heist it outside. Took a lot of tons of mammoth out here. <laughs> As you can see, the Skidmore top is lovely. So then it came to the point where it was time to develop this sucker collaring style. So we drove this rock tunnel back to go in after the middle split and the top split of the mammoth. Do we want to go down there? Yeah. yeah. So let's take a walk down here. So this is the bottom split of the mammoth vein here. The bottom of the vein starts here. You can take a look and you see the root hole all through here. 
up until this point right here. So that's your thing. And this is actually, I mean, it's kind of just like if you ever go out to like Pioneer Tunnel, and that's a tunnel, it's a rock tunnel into the side of the mountain, just and it just cuts all the veins going through. This is what you see. You know, it's the same thing, just active. Well, so this was active. <laughs> yeah, and this wasn't mined with the gangway then, because like I was saying, how we were mining this from above with those rock holes in the Skidmore. Three splits here, and we just went through the bottom split. And maybe you notice, if anybody's, if anybody actually watches this, <laughs> but he kept saying the bottom split. It is in three splits, so this would be the middle split of the mammoth. So we're coming out of the rock again into the middle split. Middle split's a little more hateful back in here. You see the timber's taking a little bit of weight. This guy's got a little thing going on here, and that's a little sad in there. We'll see how Josh is editing is. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So take a take a spy back here. So we ran we ran gangway east and west here, and there was coal shoots going up. We're not gonna walk back in there just because this is pretty hateful. But you can you can see all the shoots there and how that's actually pushed out a little bit and all the punch props that are pushed in. The punch props are the vertical ones in the middle of the three piece sets there just to hold them up. Yellow boy, that lovely yellow boy. It doesn't take long for it to turn orange. Went through the bottom, went through the middle. And this was the top split. And this is one mean, well, <laughs> this was one mean, uh, mean vein to work. This guy acted up a lot. You can see, the, well, me, you can't we didn't see a lot of coal back there. This top split coal is a lot more like friable, like Shelly coal. And uh, it's not as nice. The top was bad back there. Just a lot of, a lot of issues. So this also had, so this, this was the end of the tunnel. And uh, there was a, a wide track here where it split left or east and west, I should say. And then there was a couple shoots going up. But then this, the, the banana tunnel was also extended. It basically parallels this above us, uh, just off to the west over here a little bit. Of course, by the time we got back here, it might have lined right up with it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so then there would have been a chute that would go up that would connect to the airway for the, for the air to go out in the dust. Exhaust. That's, that's about it. This is this is it. We're gonna, I guess, hoist ourselves outside and okay, I guess take a walk back out to the slope. And I guess we're just gonna keep recording as we. Yeah. Cool. We're about 240 feet underground here. Steel is about 40 or 25 holes, 40 sticks of dynamite, 
and uh, blow that thing off. And then we have an air tube coming back. And since the air couldn't, the smoke and the dust couldn't get back out, so we'd have an air, an air mover out of the gangway, which is a, either a fan or like a venturi that's powered by compressed air. And then there'd be a tube about that big around that would be hung on the top and it would run back. And that would blow air in so the rest of the exhaust would have to come out the smoke and the dust. And that's, you know, fairly unique to the anthracite. Well, for coal mining, it's unique to the anthracite. Is everything's still drilled and blasted by hand. There's pneumatic drills. There's no, the machines didn't do this. But take a walk back here because this is uh, this is the first rock hole that we put up. <clears throat> me and me and Casey Dudak put this put this rock hole up. He's now an MSHA inspector. <laughs> but this is the first one, and learned a lot from that. Oh. What you're looking at when you do look up here is a sledgehammer that's left up there on the right. <laughs> <laughs> he can stay right there. <laughs> but uh, those would be battery props at the top. They're called battery props. And they're to protect you if you're working on working on the run. It's called or working the run. A rock pole between the Skidmore vein and the bottom split of the mammoth. And this is exactly what you'd see in the stripping pits when you see the rock holes in the high walls or the bottom of the rock as it were. This is what you would see. I get to run a little bit for you anyway. <laughs> it's pretty loaded up here, but once this all gets tapped down, you just take out of the bottom and it all works down and down to the gangway buggy and out it goes. Old J-Rad down there. Hey, Red! If you're up there and trying to get the flow of coal going again, um, you know, so you have, you have some kind of protection, it's not going to attack you too bad up there. You see that great big rock that's hanging up there now, but like the coal would make its way through the bottom or through the top up there, but it would catch in case something big came down. And sometimes you get big rocks like that and you have to either go up and drill them or put a, a paster on them, it's called. And, um, in the anthracite, it is legal to have an open shot on a run like this if you, if you needed it to um, dynamite to blow up a rock like that to get it out of the way. Certain kind of powder you can do that with, it's called 7B. It's like a white, it almost looks like white Play Doh. You take it out of the stick and you roll it up in a ball and you stick a timer in it and you slap it on the rock and come down here and pop it off and see what happens. Back here, this is just kind of interesting. This is the skidboard going east now. We'll come back and stop here because the, the roof is still decent here, but the skidmore was not very nice in places where the roof was bad and the bottom was bad too. And it's completely shut back there now. You can see the roof bolt that was used to hold that slab up. Right there, just the head of it. Yeah, there's a roof bolt below it that's still holding that rock up, but that's probably all that's holding that slab on right now is those roof bolts. You can see the pressure on the props there at the chute. <laughs> the chute even slid down itself. Yeah, let's get more. Here's our fun foot switch. Last time we're gonna be kicking these points. All this rail is so worn out it's gonna stay here, but it's going underwater, it's gonna stay there. If you notice the water, it's usually not quite like this when you're when we're working down here because the pump's gone, but but we got the underground. You wanna grab my bag down? We got the pumps off right now. You can use it if you want. Back 
Yeah. It's just nice to keep rolling. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. One take, you get what you get. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody leaving the axle up there. <laughs> yeah, over grease. Yeah. You want to get in first? Maybe you can get in and keep that thing rolling. Well, I was going to get in last and stand on the no, ladder. No, no. Oh, I'm stand on the it. ladder and film out. Okay. As much as I can. Try to get the slope going out. A little loud out here with all the water going down the slope. Oh, this is coming with. Nice shoot board. From number two, West Skidmore. Need a little memento. <laughs> that water in the gumbo yet? <laughs> Can you imagine? Wow. Um, All right, uh, so I'm gonna have to get in last so I can control. Yeah. So I'll just slip around here then. Alright. Oh jeez. That fills up fast. Yeah, there you go. That's how much water that eight horsepower pump takes back there. Yeah, I can go under this brother. <laughs> Alright, you're going to Thanks for that right now. Thanks there, thanks. <laughs> Get you with mud or something? Yeah, of course. You can see the marks from the rope in the roof. We're about to cross the old collar and six grip here. Collery work comes up here from the old Silver Street. That is the old drift. And the sun's still shining. Beep, beep. <laughs> We're good now. 
So he drops that flashlight and goes flying back down the slope. Oh, fuck it, it was only seven, uh, $300. <laughs> only. Oh, no. Find it when we pull the pumps out. Yeah. And Jared will keep it. I think the pitch of the slope is, I don't know, 70 degrees. Somewhere between 65 and 75, I guess. I see the gunboat just slides on greased wood, greased wooden rails. You want to get out first, Jack, then? And I'll, and I'll hand this stuff up to Banks? Yeah, that's fine. Poor Banks, but whatever. What, what, ever? Getting pulled out by a <laughs> inline six Ford 302 motor <laughs> attached to a Big Flory winch. <laughs> That's older than all of us combined, probably. <clears throat> probably. All right, who's going up Go first? Ahead, yeah, you have to. Josh? Yep. Oh, fuck. You got that. Stick. End of an era. <laughs> drive the state through the fucker. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> yep. We're gonna drive it in there. Yep. Tomorrow we're gonna take this down somewhere by the dump and sink the fucker. <laughs> <laughs> the official. Yep. State. Let the fucking evil spirits rise out of the goddamn low rim. <laughs>